Hello, I'm Mike and welcome to 33 Mile Garage. Today I'm going to be doing drum brakes on my daughter's 2006 Jeep Wrangler. Now there's a ton of videos out there on how to do brakes on these things and especially on YouTube there's tons of them and there's great videos out there. Uh, the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you my perspective on it and I'm going to try to really keep this video short and simple to the point. Now in this case the brake pads aren't completely wasted on the Jeep. The one thing that is going on is the wheel cylinders are leaking and I can tell by the drums, one, you can see the staining around the edges and when I get around that side, that Jeep had sat for a little bit and you can tell how much that they're leaking. So the wheel cylinders are completely shot in it. Just gonna get the springs out of the way from those pliers. What I'll do is on the front spring that's on the top, I'm just gonna grab the top of it on this angle area and roll it around, pop it off. Next one, I'm just gonna grab the spring in back. This one's even a little bit easier. Grab that, pull it out, and there you go. I'm gonna remove this parking brake cable. Get that out of the way. What I can do is I could just take this spring, turn that sideways, pop that out on there, and just throw that in the box. The springs don't matter. The springs are exactly the same from left to right side. Pop the other spring out. All you have to do is just turn these, turn them through that hook, and they pop right out. I'm just gonna remove these spring clips all I'm going to do is just push, simply push in. There you go. One out. I'm going to just gonna let this stuff drop into the box, and I'm just going to push the push these in. Just turn the clip until they slide out. Piece of cake, and remove the spreader in the center here. Try to do this. With my hands out of the way, so you can see what I'm doing. Take this guy out with the spring, throw him in the box, get this other clip out of the way. And then what we can do is we can remove the pads. The only thing you gotta watch is the emergency brake release. I just pushed it through here and this whole assembly will just come right out. No problem. It's easier to keep all this together. There's no sense on taking all this apart. And I'll be honest with you, when we go and reassemble it, it's easier to reassemble all this and just clip it over the top. Next up, we're gonna take the wheel cylinder off. There's two 10 millimeter bolts in the back of it. We'll flip around to the back side and get those out of the way. And then we'll also have to take the brake line off. These should be pretty easy to get out. All right, I'm gonna pop the brake line off. I got a 7 16 line wrench and probably I think I might be replacing these brake lines too because these things are pretty corroded on here. Repair. Yeah, I'm just twisting up the brake line right now. And I'm going to have to replace them. No big deal. I'm not really too worried about that. The only thing that's bad about it is I ordered new brake lines already and had them shipped to my house for $57 that I didn't want to spend. So I roughly have probably at this point about $200 into a drum brake job, which is kind of ridiculous when you think about it. 200 bucks, man, that's a lot of money for drum brakes. All right, onto the driver's side. The brake lines are gonna go into this union right here. So you got uh, the one on the driver's side, the one on the passenger side. So you just take those two 7 16 uh, nuts off and the line will just pull, pull right out of there. All right, looking through the passenger's wheel well, you can see the axle and on top of the axle, the brake line runs across. There's two 10 millimeter bolts that'll need to be removed. From All right, for rear brake lines, you got two choices, one, Go out and get yourself some flexible tubing. It's 3 16 You can do that. You'll have to bend it into shape. The other thing to keep in mind is if you went with a flexible tubing route, you're going to have to have a flaring tool. And you, especially for brake lines, you're going to want a pretty decent flaring tool. Don't buy the cheapest thing you can find. Steel lines, uh, especially for a Jeep, you know, they get beat up pretty good. You're going to be trail riding with them and stuff like that. Me personally, uh, I have all the stuff here already to do it with the flexible lines, but I'm not going that route. All right. One thing I did notice about the new brake lines is they did not have the rubber insulator on here. The rubber insulator is important because it does insulate the brake line against the axle. So when the clamp comes across, clamp comes down, holds it against the axle, and then it's not rubbing metal to metal on the axle. The last thing you want is the brake line to be rubbing on the axle and start to wear a hole in it. So keep that in mind when you do switch out the brake lines to make sure that you grab an insulator for that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and install the two wheel cylinders. These will just slip back in like that. 
and then there's two 10 millimeter screws that'll go from the back side. Got the brake line in, I started that by hand. I've got that done, and then I've got the two 10 millimeter bolts that go through. So all you gotta do is snug those up. I did leave everything loose so I could easily line up the brake line. Out of the assembly process, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put together the left hand side first or the driver's side. So one thing you wanna take note when you put these together is on the driver's side, you're going to use, the stud is gonna be facing up and it's going to be the right hand side of your assembly so left hand side of the vehicle that stud's going to be the right hand side the other thing that you'll have to take note of when you put this together make sure that you do have the left hand thread adjuster that's very important and then the spring is also different between left and right hand the left hand in my case is going to have a black spring on the right hand side is going to have a red spring so keep that in mind so as far as the assembly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the adjuster spring first and assemble that. So what's going to happen is this longer leg is going to ride against the side of the uh, brake shoe with this uh, curved end going over to the left. So we're just going to press that over the top of the stud. goes right over pretty easy there. So next thing is we're going to take the adjuster bracket. That's going to go on. It's got a slot here, so there's a wide side and a narrow side. So what you'll do is take the wide side, slide it over the top, and slide it in so you'll rotate this down to the bottom and then take your spring your spring is going to go over the top of the bracket and just go right over the top so when your spring comes in what it's going to do is going to put pressure and press that onto the back side so next thing that we're going to do is i did i do put a little bit of grease on the adjuster and again this is going to be the left hand thread so what we're going to do is put the other piece on the back side of it so the thread is going to go over to the left and the solid part is going to go to the right so we'll just slide that into the slot here so you'll see when you slide this into the slot you'll see that this adjuster bracket will fall right on top of the star and then what we're going to do is on the left hand side of the bracket we'll put that fork right in there so now we have this somewhat assembled Next thing that we're going to do is this brown The spring. hooks are going to go down. So what we're going to do is we're just going to stretch this across, hook it in the large hole on the right-hand side, and it's going to be the large hole on the left-hand side. Do not put it in the smaller hole on the bottom. It's going to go in the second hole up on the left. You'll probably have to grab a pair of needle nose pliers because this spring is a little bit tight. And grab that and just stretch that over, put it in. So... Now you've got basically the bottom half of this all assembled, ready to go in the car. It's much easier to assemble it now and put it in the car than try to do all this in the car. To me, it's just a pain in the butt. It's all set up and ready to go in the Jeep. What we're gonna do first off is in this slotted hole in the top right-hand side, we're gonna take the parking brake bracket and slip that guy in there. It's pretty easy to do right now before we get in the car. So we get that guy in place. He's in there. Now we'll just Pull that around, spread these apart, and get this set in place now. There's the retaining springs. The way this works is you just got the nail comes through. It's just got a flat on it. And then uh, your retainer has a slot in it that just turns in, turns it 90 degrees, and locks it in. So what I'll do is put the pin from the back side. Let that slide up through the hole to locate. That guy comes through here. I'm going to turn that 90 degrees like that. Drop the spring on top of it. And then I'm just going to press the spring. It goes through. I'll turn that 90 degrees. And that's it. Locked in. Next up, we're going to put the cable on. And again, the way this spring hook works, that's going to go back behind the brake bracket. I'm trying to do this so you can see what I'm doing. So that's just gonna, so what we'll do is slide that bracket right up and that's gonna slide right behind the bracket like that. And next up in the process, we're just gonna put the guide plate in place right now just to hold things. All right, next up, we've got this little guide bracket. This guy's gonna go in this top upper hole We'll just line him up, get him in there. The spring is going to come in and retain him. So we'll just get this spring through the hole, 
wraps around like this. A little spring will go here. This cable will wrap around the back side of this guy. And come and pin up around the hole here. You can see that it's a little bit short. So what you're gonna do is hold this guy at the top, come down here at the bottom, pick up your adjustment cable, let that slide forward. And when that slides up, that'll just hook right around there. We're just gonna set the spring. The easiest way to do it is just grab it with a screwdriver. Stretch it over like that. Get everything pushed back to where it belongs. Get that guide plate, there we go. So we get everything pushed over. So the last spring will go on is gonna be this one here. And that one's gonna be from the front and it's gonna go over the top. So just flip that around. Again, the screwdriver method to me seems like it works pretty good. Just watch your fingers while you're doing it. And there you go. And that's pretty much it. Grab the drum, we'll throw the drum on there and take a look, see what that looks like. All right, the last thing we need to do is just adjust for the drum. So I just take the star, turn, make it a few turns, test the drum. It goes on, but it's a little snug. Drums to seat a little bit. Yeah, actually, that's pretty good. Yeah, actually, that's pretty good. I think I'll. Leave it right there. All right, just out for a quick little cruise, just to see how the brakes are working. About 45 miles an hour. Oh yeah, no, oh, that's a hundred times better. <laughs> that's a fun. Wow, that's actually impressive. Wheel cylinders being bad, it was not really dragging the uh, Jeep down very good at all, but man, what a difference. I realized the back brakes only do about 20% 20, 20 of the braking, but uh, what a difference. And especially today, it's kind of snowy. The roads are a bit slick, but holy smokes, man. That's just a, a world of difference. Yeah, That's pretty cool. 33 mile garage.